I'm the second son again and today I'm going to talk about the magical number E and I've never taken AP Calc or any other English taught math class but uh, I suppose not many of the teachers would tell you the definition of E or why like y equals e to the power of x will be differentiated into e to the power of x for infinite time so those kind of things so today i'm going to explain that and then i hope this video would help you to understand a bit more about the number e so to begin with, uh, to begin with i'm going to talk about the definition of uh, e so e is defined as a limit uh, you bring n to uh, close to infinite or infinite and then what you do is 1 plus 1 over n so you, what basically you're doing is adding just a tiny little bit to 1 and then you multiply that uh, multiply that by infinite times so uh, and then also what I've rewritten here is exactly the same thing I just made h uh, to nearly close to 0 and then you're just adding that to 1 and then you multiply that but uh, multiply that for uh, 1 over h times, which is infinite times. So it's exactly the same, but I'm going to use that later. But uh, to put that, put this equation into more uh, simple and understanding, I mean, understandable way, uh, I will try to uh, get rid of the uh, brackets here. So to get rid of the brackets, what basically you do is uh, first uh, one to the power of n uh, to the power of n, but you know you can multiply one for infinite times, and it will still be one. So I'm just gonna omit that, and the next one will be uh, n combination one or combination n one. I don't know how you say it, but uh, and then you multiply that by uh, one over n for the one time, uh, for just once. And the next one will be combination n2 times um, 1 over n squared plus combination n3 times 1 over n for, uh, to the power of 3. And then you keep on that going up until uh, combination n, n minus 1 times 1 over n to the power of uh, n minus 1 plus combination nn times 1 over n to the power of n. So it's still quite hard to understand, so I'm going to simplify that. So what I'm going to do is that put, putting these combinations into a uh, more understandable form. So this equals 1 plus uh, combination n1 can be rewritten as uh, n over the factorial of 1 times uh, 1 over n. I'm just uh, rewriting that here. And then combination n2 could be rewritten as n times uh, n minus 1 divided by the factorial of 2 uh, times. Uh, I'm going to take off the brackets for uh, 1 over n squared, so then uh, 1 over n squared plus n n minus 1 n minus 2 divided by 3 factorial times n cubed I mean 1 over n cubed and then the rest goes on the same now I think you can see you can eliminate some of n's here uh, the most simple one is here you, uh, you have n on the numerator and then you have n on the denominator so these two would eliminate uh, each other. So one plus factorial of one. I mean one over one uh, one factorial uh, will be the simplified form of this part. And now it's a bit complicated part, but looking at this this one, uh, I'm just going to rewrite uh, uh, this underneath. Uh, you can rewrite this as um, you can put uh, denominators uh, on, on the same spot and I'm going to take off the brackets for this one so n squared minus 
and, and it's times one, so just I'm just gonna ignore that. And then you can also rewrite. I mean, it's not that much of a rewriting, but uh, you can make this one uh, ratio into the subtraction of two ratios. So like these, it's nothing complicated. And now you can see that you can uh, eliminate n squared uh, on both the denominator and the numerator. So this part will be simplified as 1 over 2 factorial. Uh, 2 factorial. And as for this part, you can eliminate 1n uh, on both the denominator and the numerator, but there will be 1n left on the denominator. And I remember that we are putting n to nearly close to infinite, which means this part will be pretty much zero, so that can be ignored, uh, this can be ignored. So, uh, simplifying this would end up being 1 over 2 factorial. So, 1 over factorial of 2. And the exact same thing can be said to this part too. So, just for the sake of uh, understanding, I'm going to take off the brackets on the numerator uh, n cubed minus 3n squared plus 2n divided by factorial of 3 times n cubed. And then these uh, would eliminate each other and then it, uh, it would leave 1 over 3 for, uh, factorial of 3. But as for this part, there will be uh, some n left on the denominator, which would make this part ignorable. So, one over factorial of three, and then the rest goes on the same up until plus uh, uh, one over n factorial of n. So. If you define E as this, you can rewrite E into this uh, beautiful form. And uh, just for the sake of pathetics, I'm going to rewrite this 1 as 1 over 0 factorial. 0 fact uh, factorial of 0 uh, is known to be 1 or is defined, uh, is defined as 1. So uh, it's pathetically beautiful equation. So now I'm going to talk about why this would be uh, around 2.7 or at least uh, less than 3. And then it's very straightforward. When you think of a geometric sequence of uh, half, so two, um, squared plus uh, so what I wrote here is uh, sum of the geometric sequence of uh, half so it would have uh, one, one step, by one step. Uh, so when you compare with the number above, uh, as for this part, uh, two a factorial of two is two, so this one is half, and then this one is also half, so this is exactly the same. But when you look at this part, uh, one over factorial of three is uh, one sixth, right? But when you look at the bottom one, it's uh, one, I mean, it's a quarter, it's one over four, so it's a quarter. So which one is larger is that the, the one in the bottom is larger. And then the, the same goes on for the rest of the sequence, right? But this sequence, when you add them all together, it is known that it would uh, converge into one. 
and then that can be simply explained in a, uh, with a diagram. So uh, when you think of it's a square with area of one, adding half, adding half, adding one over two means that you just divide a square into one and then, I don't know, put a colour on uh, half of it. And adding a quarter is that you divide the rest of the area and then you colour one of them. And then the rest goes on the same. So one eighth is you divide the remaining area and then you put a colour on one of one of the side and you do the exact same thing for the rest. And as you can see, it would fill up the entire square. And that means this the sum of this geometric sequence would converge. Uh, into one. So with that in mind, this part of E, this part of E is known to be less than one because this one, this geometric sequence's sum is known to be one and then each of them like when, when you compare uh, step by step, it's le less than or equal to each number. So that means this must be less than one, right? And then this part is one, this part is also one. So one plus one plus something less than one must end up being less than three, right? So now that I, uh, I've proven that E would be, uh, if you define E like this, E will be less than, I mean, E must be less than 3. And it is known to be 2.7, da 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 da, da. Uh, I'm not going to dig deep into that, but I'm just, uh, I, I just proved that um, it would uh, converge into something less than 3. Uh, it was just a... It's not that related to this whole video, but just for the sake of, I don't know, understanding. Uh, you know, you now know that E would be less than 3. Okay, let's move on to number 2 and 3. Okay, just for once, forget about the letter E and think of an exponential function a to the power of x and we don't know what a is yet but I'm going to define a uh, as a number that has uh, one uh, distinguishable nature and that is when you draw a graph of a to the power of x uh, like any of the exponential function uh, should go through the point 0, 1, right? It's a fact. But when you draw a tangent at this point, a to the power of x has a tangent of y equals x plus 1, which means when you differentiate a to the power of x and then you put x equals 0 into that uh, derivative function it should produce the slope of 1 that is the uh, nature of number a we don't know the number exact number yet but I'm just going to define uh, a like that okay so with that in mind, let's differentiate this mystery number, I mean, let's differentiate this mystery function a to the power of x. So, you just simply differentiate a to the power of x, so uh, minimum h, uh, I mean limit h, you bring it to close to zero, and this is d, 
things like the definition of differentiation, right? And in all, uh, as you can see, you can simplify that into uh, limit h nearly equals zero a to the power of x times a to the power of h minus one, right? This is just a straightforward uh, simplification. Okay, so what I will do here is that I would put x equals zero to this one. And as I defined this function to have a slope, I mean to have a tangent with a slope of one at the point zero, one in the graph. So if I put x equals zero into this one, this uh, should produce one, right? Because that's how I defined this e to the power of x function. So this tangent should have a slope of one, right? So I'm going to do that. So if you put x equals to zero, this would be one. So you can eliminate this one. I mean, you, I mean, you can just ignore that. And this a to the power of h minus one divided by h is should be or must be one. And what this means is that. Um, this is differentiation of a to the power of x, right? And then that can be rewritten, I mean, into this. And because of the nature of a to the power of x, this part is, must be one. So you can ignore that. So, what this means is that if you differentiate a to the power of x, what will be left is a to the power of x. So an exponential function that has the nature of you know, the tangent at the point 0, 1 uh, has a slope of 1. Uh, this exponential function uh, would be differentiated into the exact same function. But we don't know the num what is the number a is yet. I mean, you can, I think you know that a would end up being e, but I'm going to connect to that from now. Okay, so now let's think about inverse function. y equals e to the power of x, y equals x plus 1. So an inverse function, I think you know, is that uh, if you have like 2x plus 1, y equals 2x plus 1, you make it into x equals, so it's uh, if you make it to x equals, it will be uh, half times y minus uh, half. And then you just swap x and y, and it will be an inverse function of this. I think you've done some before. An inverse function is known to, uh, if you draw a graph, and then if you have like fx and the inverse function of fx is gx, uh, the inverse function is known to be symmetrical to the line y equals x. So for every point on fx, uh, there will be a symmetrical point uh, on gx. So that is a known fact about the inverse function. Right? So what will be an inverse function?
for y equals a to the power of x. So, as I did earlier, I'm just going to make it x equals. So, x, uh, if you rewrite y equals ax, uh, I mean a to the power of x, uh, it will be log base a of y. And then you just swap them. So, y equals log base a of x, right? Ah, did I? Okay, I redrew the graph. So there's y equals a to the power of x, and then the tangent at the point 0, 1 will be y equals x plus 1. And the inverse function of y equals a to the power of x is y equals log base a of x. And the tangent at the point 1, 0, so the exact symmetrical point to the y equals x is 1, 0, and then the tangent uh, of, uh, at this point um, must be exact symmetrical of that so it must be y equals x minus 1 because I mean it goes through this point and it must have the slope exactly the same as this one because it's symmetrical so I think you can easily get that it should have this, tan uh, this tangent okay with with this fact, so the tangent at the point 1, 0 is, has the slope of 1 would help us uh, to get to the point y, a is, I mean a will be e. Okay, so what we've found out right now is that uh, the inverse function is log base a and if you differentiate this, so like if you differentiate this log a base a, and then you put x equals 1 into this derivative function, it should produce slope of 1 because that's what we've here, right? So 1, 0, it should have a slope of 1. Okay, so let's differentiate log base a x. Log base a of x. You just differentiate straightforwardly, limit h less than 0 log a x plus h minus log a uh, you don't need to crack it x divided by h right you see that okay and then you can rewrite that okay I'm just gonna go left a little and um, it's a log so and then also, uh, okay, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to bring uh, this uh, 1 over h at the front. And then because it's a, a subtraction of a log with both base a, so you can rewrite that into log base a of x plus h divided by x, right? I think you know this fact if you have done. Uh, log before and also uh, it is known that you can bring this 1 over h as to the power of 1 over h this is also a known fact so uh, I'm going to rewrite this exact same thing limit h close to 0 log base a and 1 plus h over x and I just rewrite this to the power of 1 over h right and coming back to what we've did just a little bit before if you put x equals 1 this should produce 1 
So I'm going to put x equals 1 here and it, it will just make this part simply age. So what, what we now found out is that limit h equals to 0 and log a base a1 plus h to the power of 1 over h should produce 1. Right? Haven't we seen this before? Limit h close to 0, 1 plus h to the power of 1 over h. It's here that it's, this is the definition of e, right? So log a base a e should be 1, which means a equals e. So now it's connected. So we found out that a function, if we set a function that has a tangent with a slope of 1 at the point 0, 1, so a to the power of x, uh, this a would be e, and e to the power of x can be differentiated into the exact same uh, function if, even if you differentiate it for infinite times. So that is why this is true. I think most of the math teachers would omit this process of explaining why e to the power of x can be differentiated into e to the power of x, but I think now you can connect everything. Okay. At the very last, I'm going to talk about y log base e x. Uh, I mean log base e of x. Uh, and then if you differentiate that, in, uh, it will be 1 over x. Uh, so it's also simple differentiation. Limit h close to 0. Uh, log base e x plus h minus log e x divided by h and then the exact same thing log I any mean, okay, log base e 1 plus uh, x oh, I mean h of x to the, oh, to the power of 1 over h and we are just going to do a little bit of trick so I'm just going to make x over, rewrite x, I mean h over x into t. So limit h close to 0, if you bring this very close to 0, t would also be very close to 0. So limit h close to 0 uh, will be exactly the same as limit t very close to 0. Right? And So we can rewrite this function, I mean formula, into t close to 0, log base e of 1 plus t, and x over, I mean h over x equals t, so 1 over h equals to 1 over xt, right? Um, 1 over t times 1 over a, uh, x. Let's just put it into this way because we now we know that to the power of something on in log can be brought to the very front, right? So this can be rewritten as limit t close to 0. 1 over x times uh, log base e of 1 plus t to the power of 1 over t. We know this, this part is in definition, I mean by definition, e. So log base e of e is 1, so you can eliminate this part 
and then what will be left is 1 over x. So now we've reached to the point up until number 4, so if you differentiate the log base e of x, it will be 1 over x. So that's pretty much it. I hope this helped you even a little bit. Uh, thank you for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.